All right, guys. Shalom, shalom. We're we're back again. We're uh, continuing our discussion from Shabbat uh, regarding the calendars and going into Passover and um, unleavened bread. But right now we're discussing the calendars, and um, we're just going over uh, Brother Richard's uh, uh, calendar, how he's going by the year, which he goes by the equinox, is the sign that the year is beginning, and then the equinox at the end is the sign that it's ending. But uh, the equinox was on um, March twentieth, right? Yes, March 20th. So he's going by the new moon that's after that. Um, so his Passover is going to be uh, a month later than, than most of us are celebrating it. And so we, we were just asking, isn't there, did you have 13 months on your last year's calendar and 13 months on, on this calendar? He said, he said, yes, but when we, when we calculated it, there's actually a 13th month. And so now we're, we're discussing uh, bringing up how that, could be the adjustment to the moon phases and then Jadiel was was bringing in some some input real quick so I'll go ahead brother Jadiel yeah so because the seasons don't perfectly line up with the months especially since there's 30 29 and a half to 30 days mm-hmm. oh sorry my mute thing that that 29th and a half day accumulates after a while after a couple years it accumulates. So there's actually, it, it's the, the dates of the calendar kind of goes back further and further from the seasons. Now, because we based our months on the moon, we can't escape that order. So the moon continues to keep us moving steady throughout the year. But when it doesn't match the season, the month will, will dictate that. There's always only a 13th month every couple of years. I'm not sure the number. But there's always a 13th month that pops up. It's called a Dar 2. And um, it, it pops up to push the, the dates into the season. And then it starts to retract again. And then it does it again in, in order to keep it steady. The Gregorian calendar, because they're a solar-based calendar, they focus on these vernal equinox, winter solstice, pagan stuff. So they match up their dates with the seasons, which is why they added the with the five days, 0. 0.5555, and then every four years, there's another day added. Yeah, it's the same. You would have to do that calculation with the moon, especially since it's not a perfect 30 days, you know. So after a couple years, you would have to add another month in order to keep the calendar aligned with the seasons. So it's doing it naturally by itself, by the, the order that, that we're following is after the vernal equinox, we look for that new moon. Whatever that might happen, that's automatic adjustment that Yahuwah seems to be doing himself then with the order of the moon and, and that type of thing. Now, there's something called the equal lux. There's an equal lux, which means equal light, and equal nox means equal night. Well, so they both. Yeah, were, there, were they both equal night, equal day, whatever that time? Yeah. Was, the time. Now, the equal lux begins like probably like the 17th, which is why everyone is kind of moving on the 17th being the new moon or being the new month. But the equal lux, it means it's that it's the same light in some places. When the equinox comes, this is according to what I've studied. When the equinox come, it means that the light is the same on the whole face of the earth, every, every face of the earth. So equal lux means that it's, it's equal day and night in some parts of the earth. But when the equinox come, there's a portion of time before the summertime where the whole side of the earth always uh, experiences the same day and night. Right. So that's the difference between the equilux and the equal uh, equinox. And that's why everybody is focusing on the equilux because we're like, wait a minute, the day is supposed to have the same light. And that happens on the 17th, not everywhere. Even where I'm at now, I'm at the coast of North Carolina. The 17th wasn't equal day and equal night. There wasn't equal. There wasn't twelve hours in a day and twelve hours in a night on the seventeenth here, you know. So according to their measurements, which I would I would kind of give them a little little credibility since they worship the sun, they would they set their calendar around the sun in order to follow its movements and things like that. And you know we know the Bible teaches about the sun circuit and things like that. But you know so they narrowed down these dates for the winter solstice and so for the vernal equinox, the autumns equinox you know etc yeah i think they all have their play the sun the moon and the stars according to what scripture says they all play their roles in this 
So, you know, the moon's for the new month, if you will. And then, uh, you know, sun for the years and the, the stars are, they, they keep everything in the, in the order as far as how, how they come through as well. So, you know, I think they all play their role. You know, it's just gaining more understanding, which I'm trying to do by tracking this, which I did last year, to try to see how everything plays out according yeah. to that, because I've never done it. And I'm just tired of taking man's word for it when it is. And I want to see what he says it is according to what he says his time of measurement is. So yeah. Yeah. that's the reason I started last year, and I'm going to continue to track it until I see for myself. Right. I, I think that's the best way to do it. If everybody – starts to try to figure it out and look at the, the, the luminaries. Like there's even, you know, those, the, the time and date.com that, you know, the people, NASA, we have to re recognize whether or not they're, they're counting their time from daybreak mm -hmm. or a lot of times they count when the sun is directly above the horizon. That's when they say that's the counting of sunrise. Mm -hmm. But the Hebrew word for morning, boker, means to break light, to break the night. So it's like when once the light starts to show above the horizon, we say that's the light. You know, but the the you know the the NASA doesn't really count it that way. They count the sunrise as when the sun is completely over the horizon. That's when sunrise counts. So even that calculation of the amount of time during the day could be incorrect based over their view on sunrise sun now sunset the word um areb doesn't necessarily mean completely dark because the word areb means dust or growing dark mm -hmm. so interesting you're talking about this because this is the same discussion we had which is part of this study that i'm going to bring out this week so and you're right on on target my friend <laughs> You unmute, D. You got to unmute yourself there, Brother D. Oh, I said I'd like to talk about that before before Shabbat, Brother Rick. I don't want to be a spoiler to your message. But, um, but anyway, let, let me be like an interview guy right here because this is all new to me. I ain't going to lie. I mean, just everything I just heard in the last few minutes, I don't know what the world y'all talking about. <laughs> so let me just uh, say this. Um, I know that in this Hebrew roots, Torah, Messianic faith, there's been arguments about uh, the 13th month, whether it's whether we should embrace that and or not. Um, so from what I'm gathering from you guys, I think both of you embrace uh, the reality that we need that we need by default a 13th month. Is that correct? Well, I'm saying is I don't think we need to add it. I think it's already inherently there, depending on what your view is of when the new year starts. You know, I think what we're talking about, how we see after the vernal equinox, we look for something that automatically puts it in there for us. We ain't got to add it. Where I think a lot of them and their beliefs, they're adamant, they're adding it themselves. So I, somebody's I, making an adjustment regardless. Yeah, uh, because I, I've been keeping the feast for like five years. Mm -hmm. And this is, the, and because I follow the moon. The moon structure, so you know, strictly, I don't do barley. Um, so when I follow the moon structure, is it brings it automatically? It, it's automatically there when you're counting all the way down. This is the first time I've seen, and because I've done it only five years, this is the first time I've seen the thirteenth month. And when I saw it, I was just like, "Oh snap!" Like, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna not follow the moon. Because there's some rabbinicals that don't follow the, the new moon. They, they go by the first full moon after the, the equinox. So I don't agree with that. So I, I, I'm like, the, the, the month has to start in the spring. So in order for it to line up with the seasons, it has to be pushed forward. I have a question for you from our discussion last week, because uh, or last Shabbat. They were talking about which made a lot of sense to me when we actually calculated back, but what is the new moon to you? Is it the sliver or is it the darkness of the moon? <laughs> um, I may have <laughs> a, a different view. My view is the day after the conjunction. I believe that the conjunction is like the end of the month showing um, there's a whole, there's a whole, idea behind why I think that the conjunction is the last day of the month 
because I believe it's the it's the moon also reflects on it's a sign. It says that it's a sign as well, mm -hmm. and it's a beacon. It's a it's a a, a sign, and it, it, uh, that word sign is also used for like the sign of Jonah and prophecies and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the way that the earth is set up from the time of sin is that light begins to grow and then there's a climax of that light, which is the full moon right. and then the light begins to go down. And then at the end of history, there's going to be a complete darkness on this earth. So secondly, I believe that the moon was created to be a light. So I wouldn't start the night at complete darkness if the moon was created to be a lesser light. So if, since it's created to be a light, I would look at the beginning after the conjunction, when it goes towards uh, becoming light, that's when I would see it. It's not the first sighting, but it's, it's right. The day before the first sighting is not the conjunction either. So there's a conjunction, and then after the conjunction pass, it begins to go through its wax, um, waxing phases. And I believe that that's the first day. Um, I think that we can't see it now because of light pollution and living in the city and living in different places where there's so much light. Mm -hmm. But I believe that um, if we were, I believe that they said that in the, on the horizon, you're able to see that first slither that you wouldn't see when it's up in the, in the sky. I got you. Well, you know, because of these discussions has made me can reconsider my stance of the, the first sighting of the sliver, because now it's starting to make more sense to me even though I don't know that we can see it with our physical eyes from our last discussion, mm -hmm. which also makes me question, how is it that we know when that conjuncture takes place? If we can't see the sliver before or the sliver after, mm -hmm. that's a three-day period there. How do we know that so that we can begin to measure it from there? Because what I'm looking at, according to that moon chart, it does show me if, I'm off, if the conjuncture is the beginning, I would be a couple days after that because of the first sighting of it. So that's that's got me really think or rethinking my stance on that part of it even though i think we're in the same ballpark i i still want to be more accurate than right i i agree i i think i mean we're 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 studying torah i think since we started torah i think everybody can agree that we had to be a little bit more proactive as to what the scripture is saying yes so i think this is the same with the calendar we we're probably all going to have to not rely on greg and we're going to have to be a little proactive and follow it. We're going to have to count it. We're going to have to keep it. Uh, when you look at the scriptures, when it talks about the new moon and the scriptures, these dudes knew it was coming before it even came. You know, King, uh, King Saul, Jonathan, and David, they were saying, oh, the, the new moon is two days from now. Or so the, the how did it come their last would make my question how did they know two days prior? Right. It wouldn't be because somebody went out and cited it. It wouldn't be that because they they knew when it was coming before someone cited it. Right. So with this traditional view that you had to cite it, that means that man has to tell the moon when the months start. And that's not how Genesis tells us. Genesis says that the moon tells us when the months start. Right. We don't go out and say, all right, moon, now you're a month. No, the moon so the moon goes through its phases without us. So how is it that you determine that conjuncture then? How do you know when it's coming? The the uh, me. <laughs> yeah, what's your what's your what's your, uh, your understanding of that? That's what I'd like to know. There's there's I mean there's a couple different ways. One is I, I count the days. I, I follow it. It's kind of like it's my calendar. So you know what day is it today? Oh, it's Monday. Like it's the same way. Like what day is it today? What phase of the moon is it? You know, it's the I keep track of it. So that's one of the ways that I keep track and counting it. Uh, but at the same time, when the last when the last sighting or the last waning of the moon phase is seen, there's about three, two to three days that before um, uh, before the first sighting on the other end. So I kind of it's kind of like right now at this point in time, which I'm not saying is a perfect method. I count it, and then I I kind of base my count on you know how every uh, every month is moving. So maybe what you're what they seen. Since they were saying two days, I've seen in the scripture, we know that it's two days off. Maybe it is that last sliver they could see because you can't see the one before the conjuncture or the one after. Right. It makes sense to me that the last one I can see would determine, oh, I know 
I can't see the next one also by counting like you're doing. Right. So if you're counting your days, you know, okay, that 28th day will be the last one I'm going to see with my naked eye. So I know that there's two days before the conjuncture that begins it. So the next day would make the new year. Right. It makes sense to me. Go ahead, brother. But, but how do you know it's the last sliver? By counting, for one, if you're on, on the track of the moon, it's going to con be consistent. Right. Like, so actually counting before that. Like far yeah. before, yeah, like, before that. Like actually, the actually believing that there's an actual number from some phase within the moon, right? Twenty nine and a half. We know that thirtieth day is that is the end of it. Uh, and I've been calculating, and even though my calculations were off of the new moon, it still was consistent with showing it. It was just that I was off those days, or however many days it might have been, which looks like to me too. I remember last, on Shabbat, I think it was you, Rich, you were talking about there's a certain number, or maybe it was John, there's a certain number from the beginning to the full moon. If you work your way backwards, it's consistent. Yeah, you look at your 15. chart you just had up there, it'll tell you. You look at the 15th day as the full moon. That's what we counted back. That's what your wife got me rethinking this, because if we counted back from that full moon. Right, 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 right. Oh, okay, I'm off here, because it took me to the conjuncture, as you guys call it. So... So is it safe to say that it's possible to visually be able to detect a full moon with our eyes? We can actually detect that. Yeah, if you're going through the phases, you're going to see it. I can tell what a full I, moon is. I wonder if there's like, is there some kind of device that we need to put up into the sky or something in order to see a perfect it's, circle or something? So I don't, it's pretty hard sometimes because it's not always like a, it's not always like a 2% uh decrease in light or increase in light sometimes it's like 99 percent, and yeah. it's like but it's you know what's interesting when i was tracking the moon there'll be a day where i'm like oh that's the new moon but then when the, when i mean sorry full moon right the full moon yeah but then when the full moon comes you're like okay yeah that's the full moon it's that's it's kind of like moon. it looks different but you won't really be able to tell unless you compare and it's 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 weird like that, but but like I'm saying, like you probably wouldn't always be able to be like, there we go, I see it. So, but but I'm saying there is there does seem to be a point where you can actually identify the food. Yeah. So, with that being said, is it possible there that there's a a a consistent amount of number of days after the full moon? Mm -hmm. They would have to be. Yeah. So maybe maybe that would be a concrete thing. And sure. how they would know two to three days before the month is going to begin because they already have a set, like mm -hmm. fifteen or fourteen days already. Yes, hmm. I, that's another good possibility. How and maybe there's that confirmation if you can see the sliver, the last waning of it or whatever before. So yeah, mm -hmm. maybe the full moon is the way the way we actually counted it uh, last Shabbat from the full moon backwards or forwards or whatever. But then you still got to count. Yeah, like, you still got yeah, you still got to be proactive and and follow the calendar. You know, um, that's that's what I did when I first kept Passover. It was like I had a I was just like, wait a minute, the full moon is always the fifteenth day. It's always tabernacles. Uh, first day of unleavened bread. The tabernacle is always full moon. So, you know, we 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 looked at that as the climax of the month. You know. When full light, you know, to me is like if Passover is the full moon and the Messiah was here on a full moon, that was like the climax of light on this world. You know, it's just it's kind of like there's a lot of spiritual implications, especially since the moon is a sign, you know, to, to be a, like a beacon or monument for us. Um, two questions. Um, one, Jadiel. <laughs> or maybe more than two questions. Adiel, <laughs> when are, are you keeping Passover the same time as uh, Rick? Um, because he's going after the equinox, so he's going by, um, he's adding that 13th month this year. Are you adding a 13th month this year as well? Yeah, I set it up for the first week of May, like April, the last day of April to the first week of May. That's the, that's, uh, that's the feast that we're keeping in um, North Carolina. Well, I don't my wife wants to know: Do you keep the Enoch calendar? The e no, no. Nah, that I'm, I'm, I, I actually have the Enoch book. 
I was like in the sci-fi world. Like I was <laughs> the portals. Portals, yeah. I was trying to understand the terminologies, you know, and that that's one of the problems with Enoch is like, you know, I can't check your I can't check your Hebrew. Like I can't right. I don't know what you're talking about. Plus they changed the Sabbath day too. So they, huh? they had they also changed the Sabbath day in the Enoch channel there, where it's the specific days, like one, eight, fifty, all the way through. Some, I think, some do that. Not all. Some, some do that. Some the, the 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 eighth, the eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty second. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's not, not all of them do that though, which yeah. is weird. I don't know how all don't. So it must be like a very vague thing that talks about it, and people interpret it one way, and some people interpret it another way. Yeah. If you look at the Book of Enoch in the chapter seventy and on, it's gonna like start talking about every single day. And how the sun moves and uh, using terminology. Intercalary. You have an intercalary days. Uh, they call it I don't know. It, I can't even cross reference anything from those chapters. I don't know. I can't. I can't put my trust in that. You know. All right. Cool. Let me go to uh, some more questions. Um. So that's when you're doing that Passover. Yeah. Uh, Jadio. You weren't here last Shabbat, but you saw the videos. What is your response to the explanation I brought regarding Psalms 81 verse 3 and Leviticus chapter 23, I think it was verse 24, regarding the Feast of Trumpets, the blowing of shofars, which is on the first day of the seventh month, and Psalms 81 verse 3. That one, when I've never heard of that perspective with the covering. Right. Um, so... I'm actually, I actually have to go back and look at it and look at the context because I know that the context was referring to Egypt. It was referring to Joseph in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes you got to get some indoctrinations out of your head. You're so saying Psalm, Psalms 81 verse 3 was uh, in context Psalms, to Egypt? The chapter itself was in a, um, let me see if I could. Yeah, the context was in G in Egypt and mentioned Joseph in Egypt and not understanding the speech of of Egypt. Let me see. You said chapter 81? 81. Right, right. So looking at that, um, I'm not sure you want to. Yeah, the, the verse 5, it says that he ordained Yosef for a testimony when he went out through the land of Mitzrayim. And I heard a language that I understood not. So it's like, um, as it's as it's from verse three on, it's it's um, there's like this emphasis on Yosef, and I'm not sure if it's talking about Yosef himself or Yosef as a allegory for for Israel mm -hmm. uh, being in Egypt and him delivering them. Because when I looked at it, that's what I per that's what I perceived. I perceived that it was emphasizing on the full moon and and when he came to take Yosef out of Egypt because when when Israel left Egypt they also brought out the bones of Yosef uh, but I, at the same time like I said I haven't really went back and try to analyze that other idea so um, I wouldn't really have anything to say right now unless we look at it right now <laughs> no, we we can we can save it. Yeah, we can yeah. save it maybe for another. Uh, we'll do another recording, another discussion on that. Mm -hmm. Maybe about when the day begins. Yeah, let's 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 do that one, Jadiel, because you seem. I think you got your material, <laughs> and Rick's got his. I can't wait. <laughs> I do it before the Passover because of some of the things that you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, go, ahead, go ahead d brother d all right I, i'm gonna mediate so all right so um so rick rick believes that uh, a day starts in the morning when the sun is coming up and jody L as well as i think probably 90 percent. i don't i'm not sure who else believes a day starts in the day in our fellowship but um i think the most of us believe that it starts in the evening when the sun is going down or when the sun is already down uh, Jadiel was, was not here for the discussion that we had on that. And I think he was saying that he wanted to, to share some things. So I would like for him to, to share a few things. And then we can just go, go from there. Just have an open discussion about it. 
I think we should save that until after the message comes out so we can actually analyze some things to get a little better clarity about how it's being presented. I mean, we can talk about some of the things or his perspective. I have no problem with that, but there's so many details that I want to share that's going to, I think it's going to change your mind. I think um, the only, I mean, I mean, it's up to you guys. I mean, I can just mention what I, I know you guys are talking about Passover and to me, the the command for Passover and unleavened bread, it can't work. It can't work with uh um I wish I wish there was a I'm about to write on this wall. Um the it with the with the the, the only day idea, I, it can't work with uh the Passover in my perspective when I was studying it. It did it just didn't work to me. Neither could the day, you know, the day evening sequence wouldn't be able to work during the Passover, the Passover instructions either. Well, the Passover, um, the Passover and those feasts that are to start at night are separate from when the actual day starts. You were commanded to do these in the evening. I'm not disagreeing with those, the commandment to start the feast, those the particular ones. But as far as the day goes, that's my, that's my perspective. It's different. Now, but, yeah. If you'd like, I can pause the recording and you want to get a dry erase board or something you can draw on? Um, <laughs> if, if, I don't think I have one here. I'm not, I'm not okay. home. <laughs> no problem. So we'll just leave it as a... Yeah, we'll leave, leave as a conversational, and, yeah. Conversational, um, cool, cool, cool. I, then I, I don't want to assume, I don't want to assume what, if you, like, okay, let me ask you a question. Um, do you believe that uh, a day consists of both night and the light? No. Okay. So the word day in Scripture never pertains to both night and light. No, they're two separate seasons. Right. So the only the time of the light is what the word day can be applied to right. in all of Scripture. Right. Even though, it, you know... You, you still have the other season for the 24 hours, if you will. But mm -hmm. even the Mashiach said, isn't there only 12 hours in a day? You know, there's a, there's, there's a reference to that as far as even going back to Genesis. He talks about a day and the evening. They're two separate seasons. You know, mm -hmm. and that's the moon and the sun have guard, uh, control or rule over those seasons. Right. So um, to me... Hour is hour is actually a Latin term. Like they didn't have hours; they had a sundial. Right. So they didn't have hours like twelve hours in the clock. They had points in, of where the sun would be on the sky. Right. Now, of course, there's only twelve points of the sun in the sky during the day because the sun is not out at night. So he wouldn't say there's twenty four points of the sun because he's only talking about the points of the sun. Now they did count the night mm -hmm. by watches they had four watches that they counted at night right. so um they don't he when he says there's 12 hours he's not talking about hours like 60 minutes right right i agree with you right so sunrise and sunset and then he goes into the watch sessions and there's three phases of those two right four phases of the watch this four. right right so um when he was talking about the day, he was t and the context was talking about walking in the light and not walking in darkness where yeah. you can trip. So he used the function of the sun to emphasize on the light, like spiritual light. Right. I don't see him pointing out uh, that there was no night involved in the day because he used a reference of 12 hours or 12 points of the sun during the day. I can't use that as a context base in that he was trying to tell everybody about the clock. No, but he does. But it is also confirmed in Genesis where he talks about the seasons being day and night, you know, and they're two different seasons. And he, and there's even a context where it reveals the different seasons, the pointed seasons. All of these are pointed in, 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 in that context of scripture too. So, that's why I think it's going to be a very interesting topic when we do get a chance to go through this study. And so we can see it in the context of how it was really sit, uh, uh, written, because I think our Western mindset of how we read Genesis throws us off when he talks about the evening and then the morning. 
because it's always after he's done his work during the day hours, the light. Then, then through the night, you don't hear anything. Through the evening, then the morning. Then that was day one. That started it over. That started the next day, that morning. That's how I read that Genesis depiction. So we'll, we'll get into that when we get into the study. There's a lot of things that it's going to make, it's going to make our minds like have to think about these things a little bit. But I see it already working on Brother D. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I see Genesis pretty simple. Uh, I see Genesis saying evening is the beginning of the dark time, which I think we all agree. Evening would be as the sun is going down and morning would be as the sun is coming up. So why did it, it says, say, why did it say evening and then morning was day one? Or one day. Because because both the nighttime because both the nighttime and the daytime uh equate to an entire day. That's why the word day being used is not it it would be it would be really weird to say the nighttime and the daytime is the first daylight daylight. It well, just doesn't make we're sense. Get into this a little bit because you know I think I understand your point of view from right now, but I think that once we talk about it, I think Hopefully you'll see a little more clearly because there's a lot of information. There's a lot of uh, encyclopedias, a lot of uh, things that have to do with, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, like um, sources, if you will, that also go back. And even before a certain period of time, they always equated it that same way. So I'm going to present a lot of information and we'll take it from there and see what it comes up with. But, those are always points that people bring up, and it's, I think when you read it in the context of what I'm going to present it to you in the mindset of a Hebrew versus our Western mindset of how we're reading it today, I think you're going to hopefully bring a little more clarity, but we'll see. Just like the father and son thing, you know, we, we may be in that area of gray area. Who knows? <laughs> Don't bring that topic up again. <laughs> <laughs> Jadiel, do you want to bring anything else to the table regarding how the day starts in the evening and not in the daytime? I've, I've, I've heard uh, you guys mention in the video where uh, I think Rick was saying that is, the Israelites left Egypt during the day. During the day. Um, during the, the, you said the 15th day. During yeah. the 15th day. Now, to, to me, I see in Scripture that they left at night. We told them that they couldn't leave until the morning. They couldn't well, he, the morning. he didn't. He didn't necessarily say that. Um, he because he, he mentioned a lot of instructions, including keeping seven days of unleavened bread. You know, so there was. I understand. I understand uh, the the structure, but he says in Exodus twelve, he gave them a, a night and said to observe this night. Mm -hmm. I think it's in Exodus twelve. Let me see. If, yeah, let's go there because um, we were actually reading that and I don't think we got to finish nailing that point because I think that was like the tail end, Rich, where I lost steam. And I think uh, you read, but we kind of didn't, we didn't keep discussing and it just kind of. So let's go back to Exodus 12, that, uh, that second half there. What, what verse did you, you want to start from see. where you guys ended off? Yeah, let's see. So we already went through the Passover when the, when the lamb is slaughtered. We went through um, putting the blood on the doorposts. Um, let's see here. Shall no yeast be found in your houses. Then Moses called for the elders, said, draw out, take lambs. Yeah, we got all that. So why, why don't we go from uh, 23 or, or, or 22? Where was that where it was talked about, um, that's what I'm looking for, when they were commanded to stay and observe it, that they weren't to leave until the morning? Oh, I here. think that's 22, if I'm not mistaken. Check that out, Rich. Is that, is that mm -hmm. the one? Yeah, that might be the one there. All right, let's start from there then. Out of the door of his house until the morning. Yeah. So let's go from there. Jadiel, go ahead, lead the way, read and stop whenever you want. And, uh, you know, we could probably bring some discussion to it. All right. Um, I'm reading from the King James Version, but, you know, uh, do a little tweaking. Um, so we said from verse 23. 
20. Let's start with 21. That'd probably be easier. Okay. 21. Okay. Then Moshe called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of your door out of his house until morning for Yah will pass through this and to smite the Egyptians when he sees the blood on the lintel on the two side posts, Yah will pass over the door and will not allow the, the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. You shall observe this thing for an ordinance to you and your sons forever. And it shall come to pass when he, when you come to the land, which Yah will give you according to as he has promised that he shall, that you shall keep this service. It shall come to pass when your children shall ask you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yah's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Mitzrayim, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered out our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. Uh, you want me to continue? Just keep going. You can stop whenever you want to kind of bring clarity on why on my the, perspective. The, the, the day, starting a new day doesn't work. Versus an evening type of thing. Oh, okay, okay, right. Um, right. On that, there before we go on about them not leaving until the morning, they can't leave their house. Yeah, yeah. I see, no, because I see that. I see that aspect because I see multiple instructions. Even in verse nineteen, it says, um, seven days there shall be no leaven found in your house, for whosoever shall eat that which is leaven, even that soul, even that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether it be a stranger or born in the land. And it says, you shall eat, no, no, eat nothing leavened. This is verse 20. In all your inhabitants shall you eat unleavened bread. Then Moshe called all the elders together, told them to draw out a lamb. So they also received the instructions of eating unleavened bread for seven days, mm -hmm. um, which we know that they weren't able to do in Mitzrayim. So there's multiple instructions that he's given them to do that he said when you get into the land. Yeah, but that came in right. Well, that was a memorial for them to do as a as a witness or a sign, uh, if you will, a memorial of what he did for them during that time. So he's telling them there: these are the things you're going to do. Prepare yourself. Prepare your unleavened bread because you're getting ready to dig a journey. You're getting ready to come out of Mitzrayim. So he's telling you. Then he says, "Get kill this Passover lamb. Put that blood over the doorpost because that's going to be your sign that I'm protecting you, so that I pass over you." But you're not to come out of the house until the morning. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, I see, no. I, see, um, I see from verse 21, it shifts gears from talking about future. Verse 21 starts talking about, it, get, it gets back to the, to the reality, the, the present for Moses. Right. You know, it says, then Moses called for all the elders and said to them, you know, now he's giving them instructions for the real time. Right. Uh, well, because I see, I don't see that necessarily because I do see that they were still, they weren't saying, like, they were not given instruction to make bread for that night only. The, every single instruction of unleavened bread was the seven-day unleavened bread structure. Which was the day they were leaving out of. Right. So you see them, you see them leaving. They were not instructed only to focus on that one time because you see them leaving with unleavened bread. And they were only given the instructions of the seven-day unleavened bread. Right. You know, so even though he gave them a structure of seven day unleavened bread, you see them making that unleavened bread when they left. So, right. you know, that it's, it's not saying that 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 was only a time when they got into the land because they tried to make unleavened bread that night and they could not they could not finish the bread. Right. I agree. But I think we have to get to the end of this chapter to see that they could not finish the bread. They were not instructed to make unleavened bread outside of the instruction of the seven days. So right. even though he gave them a seven-day instruction of unleavened bread, they still had to leave that first night. Oh. Are you saying that they didn't have unleavened bread with them as they traveled? Yeah, no, I'm saying that they did. Okay. I'm, say, I'm saying that they did. I'm just saying that part of the instructions was to remove leaven, to, yeah. to make the bread. Yeah. And that was not only restricted to when you go into the land, even though it says in verse 9, when you're in the land, it says in multiple verses when you go into the land. But even though he says when you go into the land, he's not restricting that instruction to that part. 
because they still made unleavened bread. According yeah, I don't to think I don't think none of us disagree with that. I think that the, all the instructions are applicable in the land, outside of the land. Right. But what we're what, what I think Rich is trying to identify is that he's instructing the Israelites in Mitzrayim in that time to stay into their stay in their houses until the morning. And there are, and there's other ones in there that he tells you at, at at midnight, if you will, is when all of this began. And then they came to them after that, and they told them, "You guys got to get out of here hastily." get on out so that was after midnight sometime we know that that all this transpired after the, the the killing of the firstborn so it was sometime after that until whenever they left which was hastily how, however much time it took them to to get their gold and silver that was given to them and such and get on out the door right so are, are we because there's 50 there's 51 chapter uh verses yeah, we can we can keep going. I just want to make sure we're both sharing our, our being clear what yeah. we're observing. In my in, in my mind, I'm looking at all the instructions as being like a whole. Okay, it's complete. Like it's not one. Him saying there was no emphasis on saying, okay, now you you do this now, but then this you'll do later, or this one you'll do now, and then this one you'll do when you come in the land. There's no there's no distinction like that in the instruction. So I'm just pointing out that the instruction of not leaving the house till morning wouldn't necessarily have to fit in the, oh, this goes for now instead of this is part of the entire instruction that I want for this service to be kept, especially since I emphasized and said, when your children see you doing this, what are you going to tell them? Right. You're going to tell, you know, so he's talking, he's talking about the future as well. Right. right. So you're saying on the 15th, when you're eating the Passover lamb, you can't go out of your house. Until the morning. You're supposed to eat it on the 15th. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm not even saying that because. Uh, <laughs> here's why I'm not saying that because I don't see. I don't see when I'm seeing him. Him giving them instruction is not like. Um, this is how. This is how things should be structured. This is how things should be set up. Um, I'm but not looking at. Isn't that an at instruction it. though? Don't leave your house until the morning. Isn't that like a command? Wouldn't you agree? I would. I would. 22 uh, verse yeah, 22. I would, I would, I would, I would agree. So when would I would, I would have to agree right now. Okay. It just, it conflicts with, with the other stuff that I don't want to okay. interrupt this, this um, reading. All right. Fair enough. Let's, let's go ahead and keep reading. I think, I think we made it clear. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I think uh, we left off at. Uh, 23. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, was it 23? 27. Yeah, not going until the morning, I thought. Oh, well, yeah, from where you finished working, uh, stop reading. Yeah, you're right. It was 20. 27. Right. Yeah, go ahead, 27, brother. You want me to continue? Yeah. Oh, okay. And the children of Israel went away and did as Yah had commanded Moses and Moshe and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass at midnight that Yah smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt from the firstborn of Pharaoh, that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Misraim, for there was not a house that there was not one dead. And he called Moshe and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve Yah as ye have said. Also take your flock and your herd, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. Um, My wife's got a question. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what do you guys take? What's your take? On that verse, was it 30? 30, when it says, Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and they, um, where was it that they called out for Moshe? Yeah, and 31, they called for Moshe and Aharon by night. Even though they weren't supposed to leave, leave I was trying to listen until the morning, but I believe Aharon and Moshe were called by night, though. Oh, oh I got you muted, Rick. Okay. You can unmute yourself, too. I just, go ahead, brother. Yeah, I agree. He he summoned them after everything. Everybody was killed. They found all the, and that was after 
midnight, if you will, I guess, they, they realized that everybody was, all the firstborn was dead, so they summoned them because they were warned this was going to happen. And after they seen it, they called them. And they said, come, you guys got to get out of here. And they rushed them out hastily. So sometime after that, during the night, they had to gather their stuff. They had to gather the gold from that. So that isn't something that's going to happen immediately. So it's sometime after that nighttime that they started this process. It's so, some. It's somewhere in between the twelve-hour period because there's twelve hours of nighttime. Just to give a number, there's there's right. there's a lot of nighttime. So there's a lot of time. For, it could have been midnight. It could have been before midnight. But they couldn't after, after midnight. Well, we'll get. Yeah, we'll get to that. So they couldn't leave until morning. So it had to be sometime after the morning time. So they called them in between that midnight and that morning, telling them you got to get out of here. Take this. Take that. Whatever. And bless us or bless me. What is that? Oh, hold on. Okay, I guess my question, Rick, is why do you say they had to leave after morning? That's why I think I'm, I missed that. The scripture that. says there that it says they had to stay until morning. They couldn't leave their houses until the morning. So, to me, um, Moses and Aaron left their house. Well, why? They summoned them, you're right. So, was it after the morning that they came? Did they break a commandment? Of Yah because they left the house to go talk to Pharaoh? Ooh. Huh? It doesn't tell us when they summoned them. It just said they yeah, the, In verse 29, it says, And it came to pass at midnight uh, that he smote all the, all the firstborn. And in yeah. verse 30, it says, And Pharaoh rose up in the night. Right. Um, and then it says in verse 31, And he called Moses and Aaron by night. Mm. Called them by night, but when did they actually show? It doesn't really tell us that. He, he called upon them. He summoned them at night. So it's sometime before the morning. So it could have been, you know, if you look at the rest of them, they would say, I, all along here, Moses says, this is what Yah says. and he, I, I, understand, I understand what you're saying. I you don't, know, uh, I don't like, think he'll break that command either. I understand what you're saying logically, right. according to that logic. Right. Uh, but logic doesn't is not really like a stamp of what can or can't happen. I think that's one of the reasons why you're saying things like they had to wait until the morning or they couldn't do. I think because because when I'm looking at this, I, I, I think I think as we continue, we'll kind of get a bigger picture and kind of like. I see that they rose up at night, it says in verse 30. And then it says that the Egyptians were urgent upon the people uh, to send them out of the land in haste. Um, in, in my mind, we know that when these nations were plagued, and they, when they received that plague, they blamed the people for the plague. Mm. Now, in my logic, in my logic, I'm like, if I thought you killed my son, you're getting out of here now. <laughs> I'm not waiting until no morning. But wasn't there a wasn't there a uh, warning that was given to Pharaoh about all these things? Yeah, the, the, yeah, there was yeah, there was definitely a, there was warning. I think there was a warning given to to everybody. I, I believe. And maybe that's why the Pharaoh says and, and leave and go worship your Yahuwah like you claim. But bless me also on your way out. Hit the door. Okay, I think. What if? Ahead, what if? What if it's? What about this curveball here, guys? Moshe told the elders not to leave their house. He didn't say he couldn't leave. Well, there's another possibility. Because think about it. They're, they're the stiff neck ones. I, I, this is one, one of the things that I was thinking before because I, I believe that Yah was like, don't leave. Don't. They're not even supposed to leave their house on the Shabbat. Remember in Exodus 16, they didn't. They. He said, "Stay in your house in your tent." But we don't see that. We see everybody walking around on Shabbat, carrying your mats on Shabbat, picking wheat on Shabbat. So we can't just because it was said not to do that. It was. There could have been a specific reason because we don't see them, you know, staying in in the house on Shabbat when it was told to them to do so. You know, that's just one of the one of the that's only one of the reasons why I don't look at that as him saying that like this is the command for Pesach. I'm thinking like this is 
you stiff neck Israelites that didn't believe when Moshe first came to you, stay in your houses. I'm trying to save your behinds. Yeah. But that's that's, yeah, that's I, I look at that stay in your house, stay in your house till morning as the the now, not the for that for that time. Not like a, a command yeah. for the whole. You know, right. Yeah, I don't look at it as a command for later. Just because you have them traveling to Jerusalem on Pesach and staying in inns and mm -hmm. staying in the temple, you so know. It was for that night. I agree with you there. But yeah. if you tell them, don't leave until the morning. Maybe it was Moshe and Aaron as the leaders, you know, they, they, they were summoned and they, maybe those two were the ones that came out. Maybe you're right. It was because they were. There, there was multiple times where he told them to stay in their tents mm -hmm. throughout the, the wilderness where, you know, especially when they had to consecrate themselves and, and he gave them specific instructions. Three days, consecrate yourselves. Don't go with your wives. Into, I'm not saying that that's going to be when everybody fasts, they have to do it the same way that they were commanded to. I agree. You know, so, um, but the, the night now, the night aspect, right? Yeah, night. What, what verse is that again? I, we're on verse 33. 30. That's, 30 was the question. Fire rose up in the night, in, in the night. He and verse, all verse 30 said, it came to pass at midnight. Verse 30 says, Pharaoh rose up in the night. 31 says, Moses and Aaron was called by night. And then um, in verse 33, it says, the Egyptians were urgent upon the people, uh, well, basically like pressuring them to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, uh, Rick, I think your logic was that they couldn't do all of this stuff in that time span at night. Well, they, they shouldn't be doing anything because they had to be in their houses. To, in my mind, I'm like, if I'm an Egyptian and you're in Egypt and I think that is because of you, my children died, I'm getting you out of there as fast as I can right this second. I'm not waiting until you, you collect your stuff. And I believe that the following verses kind of show that haste because they didn't, you know, think about it. Like on the 14th, they slaughtered the, the Passover. They had all their clothes on that whole time in order to, for this particular moment. You know, it, I, this is just in my logic. I'm just giving you my perspective so that way it won't be like you don't know why I'm thinking this way. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Well, here, here's one more um, that I would bring into that was just talking about the, the Passover lamb and having to eat it and anything until the morning, I believe, is in here as well. If there's anything left, they got to burn it up or something. Um, was it? Is yeah, right here. Uh, it's uh, ten. Yeah, anything verse ten. None of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. Right. That so, doesn't mean to burn it before the morning. No, it, right. Anything that's left until the morning, if it's there, then you got to burn it once the morning rises. Right. So there's another of the, the reasons that I equate that is that they had to stay there in their houses until the morning. I think that, you know, if you think about how the massive amount of people that there was, that they had to give gold and silver and they had to collect their animals and stuff, how long is that going to take? I can't put a number on it, though. Do that during the night. Can you gather all your, your flock and all that and that stuff uh, between midnight and uh, I, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to say yay or nay on it. It's just questions that are in my mind. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Here is all we're doing. We're, we're none of us are really going to know. Is our own perspective of what it's saying. You of know? the time, right? Um, um, so. Millie, you want to say something? Yes. So my question is that we're going over this passage to see when the day starts. Correct? Is that was that? The if the day is, we're going over the passage and. It, it was the day thing was mixed in there. It's like I think Jadiel was saying it doesn't work well if you if you think a day starts in the morning. It doesn't work well with the with the Passover story, right, Jadiel? I think that's yeah. where we're going. And then I'll yeah. give you an opportunity to kind of go through it and share share with us why you think. Yeah. That. Okay. So let me let you finish because I'm. I was gonna. My I guess my question was either way how you read it. Some events started at night. Some parts of the event started in the morning. I, I think your your mic is mic just went out.
Okay, so I guess my question with this one is, there were some events that started at night and some in the morning, but this scripture doesn't particularly note that the intention of these events is when to dictate when a day starts. So for right. example, I could say, let's say I start at evening and I say, well, see, some of the stuff started at midnight, so therefore the day started at midnight versus, oh, well, they had to be rushed down in the morning, so no, the day, so I, that's, I'm kind of hesitant as to this being, being a good reference as to when the day, when a day starts. That's my only it's not. I agree. It's not a it's, reference to the day beginning. Only the Shabbat. I disagree. Well, um, see, all right. Let me let me let me make a reference. Right. So, numbers numbers chapter thirty three verse three, I believe, says that they left Ramses on the fifteenth day. Right. So it says that they left Ramses on the fifteenth day. Um, what Rick is saying that the night does not. Is not included in the day, right? Now right. I believe that they left at night. Now, if they left at night, then the statement of the fifteenth day would incorporate both day and night as a day. If I, if um, if the night, if they did, if they left at night, and number says that they left on the fifteenth day, referring to the date of the month, you would have to incorporate both night and day as a day. I'm not, based off of scripture. I'm not saying that, that if there's not a 24-hour period that we can count at, in a day. I'm just saying that there's a difference between a day and a night. There are two different seasons. But I mean, of you know, of course there's a difference in day and night, <laughs> light I and thought, dark. Rick, I ain't going to lie. I thought earlier you made it very clear. Every time the word day is used, it's referring right. to daytime, not, not the 24-hour <laughs> period. That's my point. There's a 24-hour period because we don't just stop at 12 hours. You've got the night hours that are included in that. I hate to use that word day. That's what gives us the problem. It's right, right. So I would have to, I mean, now, because I, I try to make it, clear if you were saying that the the night was not incorporated in the what we call the day is the calendar day i'm gonna say calendar day calendar day 24 yeah. right so in the calendar day both night and light is yeah. incorporated in a calendar day right right i agree okay so so i guess to you it wouldn't matter if they left at night or during the day no, it wouldn't matter if he's saying he left on the fifteenth. It was sometime in that in that period. So that's that's why I was asking the question earlier because that's a little bit different than a lot of the day starts in the day believers. They kind of emphasize that the day is the only thing that is um, acknowledged. The nighttime is not acknowledged as a part of the day, the calendar day. So right. that's why I was saying your your perspective is a little bit. Uh, different than what they're saying. I'm looking at th that word day is the problem for me. It's the light out, light and night is really right. So when are you? Which one are you saying begin? You're so you're saying that the daytime, and then it goes into nighttime. You're saying is that sequence not nighttime and then daytime? That's right. right. I'm saying that that doesn't work for Passover either. <laughs> well, it can though because because of the reason that. He told us only on those specific feast days that they start at night. Mm -hmm. Only those days. But if right. you look at the other sequence of things that are in Scripture, right, there's a whole uh, another. I believe it says something different, but right. So, like, if you look at, um, but but you guys, I, I believe you guys covered that when you guys went over the fact that if the you kill and slaughter the animal on the fourteenth between the evenings, and then you end up eating it. At night, on the fifteenth of the month, you would have to see, huh? That's what they think. Huh? I think that it was slaughtered and eaten on the fourteenth. Right. So that's kind of where we. That's kind of where we have to. Um, that's kind of where we have to start. Because I, I believe. All right. So, I, I just want to point out a few verses. Like, um, I'm just want to point out one verse in Exodus 12. Uh, of why. Because of Exodus 12, verse 42. So Exodus 12, verse 42. Now, this is not, this is not talking about, we, we would have to go back to talk about that 14, 15 thing. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, since it, we're kind of on one accord that the calendar day encompasses both light and darkness. Yeah. In the, okay. That's, that's kind of not the same way I've heard other people put it, but that's, 
you know, I agree. I agree on that, that aspect that it encompasses both for a calendar day. So in verse 42, it, it says again, it's talking about the night and it's giving you the memorial of what's happening that night. Um, and it says in, in Exodus 12, verse 42, it says, it is, a night, uh, it is a night to be much observed unto Yah for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yah to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. So he tells them that this night is to be observed because that night he brought them out of Egypt. And then he says that night twice and said, this is the night to be much observed, which is why I keep, um, I keep it at night because it's, he's saying here to do so and to remember that this is when you was brought out of Egypt this night. So if he said this night you was brought out of Egypt, um, and he says that you was delivered on the 15th day. So you would have to say that this night is the 15th calendar day. That was the night that they went out of Egypt, or the day they went out of Egypt. I agree that they right. went on the 15th. So that night is the, fifth, is the 15th calendar day. So that night is also the same night that they ate the Passover and Yah passed over. That, that same night is the night that they ate the Passover, and that same night is the night that they left Egypt. And Scripture says that they ate the Passover and left Egypt on the 15th day of the beat. So that would, well, I believe that they, I agree with you that they left out on the 15th. Now, this is interesting because it was the night watched by Yahuwah to bring them out of the land of Egypt. So this same night is a night of watching kept by Yahuwah by all the people of Israel throughout their generations. That's an interesting interesting perspective as far as when they left out. I agree with that. That they left out on the 15th, so it says they left out at night, so maybe that was the next day. And, 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 uh, and maybe it's not like Moses lied or anything because he was making a request for nobody to leave. It wasn't like it was a, an ordinance to kind of like, I don't know, so if people are leaving, it's not like they're breaking some Torah of Yahuwah. Maybe it was Moses just requesting, don't leave until the morning. Do you know why you would have to conclude that? Because when Yah was talking to Moshe, when Moshe starts say, speaking in verse 21, it doesn't say that Yah said unto Moshe, speak this unto the children of Israel. It just says, then Moses said, call all the elders, said, take a lamb, you know, uh, kill it, this is the Passover, take hyssop, do this, and stay in your tents. It doesn't say, it does say, if Yah speak unto the children of Israel, which we know, we know that consistently Yah writes that in the, in the Torah. So it's almost talking. like Moses is human too. Sometimes he gives his ideas. He brings some ideas to the table. I would tell him to stay in their tents too. <laughs> I'm like, stay in your rooms. <laughs> Y'all didn't believe me for all these plagues. Y'all always doubting. You're always tripping. Somebody's going to fall and mess up and end up being outside and going to get taken by this thing. Y'all ain't going to be protected by the blood. So just stay in your house. Just stay in your house. I do the same happens. thing with my children. Like with my children, I would tell them not to do certain things. They know certain things as rules. But then there, there's sometimes I go that extra step. Like don't speak, you know. <laughs> I'm not telling them not to talk that day, but I, there's certain moments where I say right now, don't speak. Maybe next time you can, but right now, you do not do. You know, it's the same to me in my logic. Well, you know what? This brings me a little clarity about something I had a problem with, with them leaving on the 15th. Being the 15th was a Shabbat, a high Sabbath. So maybe this is the answer. They had to observe that through the day that they couldn't go because they couldn't do no work. They couldn't do any of that. So they left that evening that night to take off on the 15th now that that may be the reason that i had problem with that once before that that may be the reason why well that's that's probably why we gotta go back now to the 14 15 thing <laughs> because we we're i think we're starting over here because I, I, of what i thought and then we're kind of like clearing up it up backwards but the 14 15 timing Right, the timing. And if right. it ended at night, then that would almost make sense to me. Go ahead, I'm sorry, Nilo. Okay, I want to ask a few questions because I want to make sure I'm understanding. 
each of your two brothers' point of view. So I'm going to go with Jadia first. You believe that evening starts the next day, correct? Yes. Okay. And Brother Rick leaves in the, in the morning, correct? Yes. Okay. So with this account, Jadiel, you believe that the, that the Passover was slain, killed, eaten the 14th that evening, okay? And then between... What? Clarify that. What's the 14th that evening? The 14th uh, evening, the 14th evening. The beginning of the 14th? The, the beginning of the 14th. So, so oh, yeah, you got to do that. No. So, you believe the Passover is slain? Go ahead. Here, go ahead. Right, I'm going to just talk for her because I want her to be. I got it. Yeah. So, Jadiel, do you believe that the Passover is slain, killed, and eaten at the beginning of the 14th? Uh, no, I believe that it's killed on the 14th, right before the beginning of the 15th. So, right before the morning time. So, right before Rick's day would begin. Mm -mm. Rick's day begins during the day. His begins. Rick's That's day. all right. Let me let me see if I could um. Begins at night. I know, but if he's saying right before the before the before fifteenth, if the fifteenth day starts at night, the fifteenth day starts at night, then the fourteenth before the fifteenth will be during the day. So the four the so when he says you shall keep the lamb until the fourteenth day, right? Rick would agree that the day is talking about this is the daytime. <laughs> So it says at evening, and then that word at evenings means between the evenings. In the, in the structure of, of um, evening morning structure, between the evenings would be the beginning of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th. So the 14th day between the beginning of the 14th and the beginning of the 15th would be when you kill and prepare the lamb. If you turn it around, uh, do, is, does, that, is, does that make sense? If the 14 begins, if the day starts at, I, th I think your mic is off again. Your mic is off again. All right, so just to be clear, you're saying that between the evenings, which again, uh, after Saturday's discussion, to, to, to be honest, I don't know why in the world I embraced the between the evenings idea. I don't know where I got that from. Uh, but that's, that's you're saying between word. the evenings is... Anywhere between the whole 24 hour period or 20, no. 20, 23, I mean, 23 or 22 hour period, or is it shorter than that? Uh, when he says, because he gives a specific time, um, evening doesn't mean sunset. Evening, eve, the word evening means areb, which means to grow dark. So even, even the, um, the evening sacrifice, you know, the morning and evening sacrifice. The evening sacrifice wasn't done at dusk because they had a specific point in time. Is Rick frozen? Oh, sorry. No, nope, he's good. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I, I think I kind of embraced that 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 teaching just by faith. I just, I guess I heard okay. a brother say, okay. and I'm like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And then I'm like reading the word evening. I'm looking it up in the Hebrew. I'm like, this isn't making sense to me. No, evening means Ereb, in the. That's the funny part. When you look up in the, it doesn't mean in the. The, the. When you look up, when it says in the evening, the word before Areb uh -huh. is Bain, Bain Areb. And that means between the evenings or the distinction of the evenings. Okay, so are you saying sometimes it says in the in Hebrew and sometimes it says between? That's the only time that it, didn't, that it says between when it talks about at the evening. So every time in, the Eng in the most translations where it says in the evening, you're saying that it's saying between the evenings? No, the Hebrew, the, I'm sorry. You, the got, you got when the sun goes down. Right. And you got some period before the sun goes down. Right. How do you, distinct, how do you distinguish between the two in Hebrew? In, uh, that's, the, that's the funny part. The word Hebrew or the word, sorry, the word Areb means to grow dark. Now, what people do is we tend to put that timing wherever we want to put it. But the scriptures actually puts uh, the evening sacrifice. There's a point in time when the evening sacrifice starts that that time is evening. It means to grow dark. Sunset is night. So there's a difference between evening or even and night. Night is like 
when it's dark. Got even you. is when it get it's going to get dark. Okay. So when you say between the evenings, you're talking about between the point in time in which dark occurred and uh, which dark will occur. This How about this? Just to keep it simple for, for everyone. Even mm -hmm. when it says in English, in the evening, it's not talking about in the night. Right. Okay. So if something, if there's a scripture that says in the night, we know that it's after, it's either as a, when the sun is down or sometime after the sun is down and before the sun comes back up night, dark time, right. sun is completely down. Right. But if you see something that says evening in the evening, it's that period right before the sun goes down. It's as yes. the sun goes down. okay. And here, here's one example. Huh. All right. In, in Matthew 26, where it talks about the Messiah eating the Passover. Yeah. It says that, and in the evening, it says the even came. It says yep. the even uh, was there, and they asked him, where are we going to prepare the Passover? Right. And he says, and go go prepare the Passover at this place, et cetera, et cetera. And then it says, and then when the even came, the Messiah sat down with the 12 disciples. So it says, when even came, they asked him where they're going to prepare it. And then when even came, he sat down with his disciples. So which one is it? Why is it saying both? Because one is when the time right before night and one is like right at the end. It's as it's, it's, I can't I can't really uh, pinpoint why they would use those two words. But the context would tell you that they're two different time periods. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Brother Rick, you want to jump in there? I'm mad about what we talked about last week about did he really eat the Passover or was it the preparation? And it was just a, a meal or a supper that he had with them uh, prior to that. According to the scriptures, it was two days out that they was talking to these, that he told them to go for, you know, prepare a place for the facade. Um, so you said he ate Passover with them, but... Our, yeah, our, I changed my mind after that discussion. <laughs> I think he just had a regular meal with them. Yeah, I agree. After the, after the discussion, I, I definitely had a change of heart. I would, I would probably have to have the discussion. <laughs> yeah, we all did. Yeah, I, I mean, I would like to, I would like to, I would like to um, see that compared to what. If you go look and read Matthew's account again, and even the other ones, it tells you the same thing. They were two days out. He said, two days from now, I will be, you know, the Passover. And then he sent them out to go prepare, which is basically get things ready for the facade. So then that evening, he sat down with them, according to what that scripture says. And then the following was the Passover, which we know he was put to death on that. Uh, he never made it. Right. I kind of um, like this specific verses that say it was the first day of unleavened bread. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, it says it was the first day of unleavened bread when they asked him, when can we make the Passover? So Matthew 26, Mark 14, and Luke 22, it all says that it was the first day of unleavened bread. Right. Right, right because... I know. Say that again, Rick. Is there a preparation, which all of the Shabbats, uh, there's a day of preparation before that they prepare everything and get everything ready for the, sh for the actual Sabbath or the high Sabbath. The next. Right. If the, if the Exodus is telling us that they prepare the Passover meal on the 14th, and ate it on the 15th, then the preparation would have been the 14th. Say that, that I know of. It's the, com the command is to prepare it on the 14th and eat it on the 15th. Where does it say to eat it on the 15th? That's my question. I've heard, I've heard this said, but I haven't seen it in Scripture. That's, that's, I think that's what we're trying to... Yeah, we can um, go there. because be, That's where I stand. I, I, I believe the Passover is slain on the 14th, slaughtered, but it's eaten on the 15th. So, yeah, Milo's got hers, too. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to... I'm I gonna got mine because I was going to try to ask you guys questions based on this. <laughs> I'm going to make the, um, the chart starting during the, starting during the day also. You guys see it backwards, right? No, I think it's that's clear. 13, Does this say day, day night? night day, night, yeah. Oh, oh we only sweet. See it backwards to ourselves. Okay. Great. So can I ask you guys a few questions? Yeah. 
Okay, may you hold it? Yeah, I'll hold it. Okay. All right, let's, let's see if you can see that. All righty, so the purple is Brother Rick. I hope you like the color purple. And the red is Brother Jadiel. Okay? Mm. Now, I'm just going to, I just broke it top to bottom instead of left to right. Okay? So now, Brother Rick, you're saying the day starts in the morning and the nighttime. This entire day will be the 13th to you. Calendar day. And then 14th and then 15th. Brother Jadiel, you would say when he, when Brother Rick is in the nighttime of the 13th, we're really at the evening of the 14th. This is when it actually starts the 14th night or evening into the 14th, correct? From evening to day? Yes. I'm not sure why, why it would be that. Okay, if this is the evening, like let's say, I'm just going to say 6 p.m. Nighttime. Nighttime, 6 mm -hmm. p.m. And I'm just throwing out the time for a period. This starts the next day, 6 p.m. at night? Um, I think the days would be the same as what is just which which section i think you don't i think if you just keep 13 14 and 15 i think then we can kind of look at the perspective because the his 13th night would still be the will be um, your 14th oh no no yeah his 13th would be my 14th right okay so, so is, right. okay so you're That's you're going point. diagonal he's going straight up and down okay so mm -hmm. now here's where the questions begin brother jadiel where mm -hmm. do you see the lamb was killed here the 14th night or 14th during the day the 14th day the 14th during the day okay mm -hmm. when was it eaten 14th day the 15th night the 15th night okay right. I agree. okay now brother rick can we unmute him or can he unmute himself yes so right now you're eating uh jadiel has it slain here but it was eaten here on the 15th Brother Rick, you believe that the Passover lamb was slain, killed on the 14th top of the day? Or going towards the, or towards the evening? Well, according to the scripture, I think that he was slain at, in the sixth hour, wasn't it? The sixth hour or the third hour? Third hour. Third hour. So the third hour is actually mo like noontime. Six okay. hours noontime. So about... So about midday, mid of the, the, the day day. Middle of the day. Yeah. When do you eat the pass? When would you eat the Passover at this at this time? Well, I think that it was uh, prior to. No, no, it would have been prior to uh, be, before the night time. They had to have it down off of the stake. Anybody that was crucified, if you will, had to be down off of that according to their customs before that night or that dawn, if you will. So, okay. So you believe that the Passover lamb was eaten before the nighttime during the daytime on the 14th? Yeah, towards, towards, the, towards the evening. Towards the evening. Like the ninth hour, if you will, uh, in that area by the time he had, between the ninth and dusk, if you will. Okay, so a little sooner than Jadiel. Okay, when, Jadiel, when do you say that the Israelites had to leave Mitzrayim? on the 14th or 15th, you would say the, this is the 15th. So the 15th night or 15th during the day? The 15th night. During this night. Okay. According to the verses we just read, yeah. Okay. Brother, I, would, I would agree according to that verse, it would have been in that, that night of the 15th. So, Brother Rick, you your 15th is over on this night. Yes. So you would say it's not on the 14th night to you. It's an, a whole day behind. Right, because you got the 14th. That, that of course we we got the disagreement of whether they left or we were they weren't able to come out of the night or whatever. Mm -hmm. The next the the more the daybreak, if you will, for me would have been the beginning of the fifteenth, which mm -hmm. would have been the high Sabbath, mm -hmm. and they they can't do anything during that time mm -hmm. until the evening time, which would have been where they would have left. So that would have given them you know the, them time to gather up all that they were going to give to them to to make them leave. Okay. Now I have a I have another question. I'm gonna bring back the um the verse that Jadiel brought. Wrong pin. And numbers thirty three three. And this question will be for Brother Rick. So in Numbers thirty three three it says they travel from Ramses in the first month on the fifteenth day of the first month. On the next day after the Passover. Oops, sorry, hold on. All right. So okay, so Numbers thirty three three says 
they travel from Ramses in the first month on the 15th day of the first month on the next day after the Passover, the children of Israel went out of the high hand in the sight of the mitz- mitzvah. Brother Rick, you would say that is the 15th day. Well, the 15th night, they said, according to what we read in Exodus, that night, the 15th night would go along with what you just read. So, so when it says the 15th day, now it's just, it could be any portion of this time. Oh, again, again, the day, yes, I would say exactly, because we're, the day is the problem that we have with our English, according to those. But yes, with, if you want to say that within that 24-hour period, that 15th day, but okay. within that night, according to what we just read, of the 15th day. Okay, perfect. So just to clarify, Brother Jadiel is here, and Brother Rick is here on leaving when they left okay thank you that just clarified me uh jeff had a jeff had a question yeah if they left on the 15th night wouldn't that mean they left by full moonlight if we're counting forward 15 days from a new moon moon phase wise wouldn't that mean that they were kind of let out by full moonlight definitely they're both agreeing okay i was just making sure because that just seems to make a lot of sense that's all my my follow up question with the chart my wife brought up was, Jadiel, when what day do you believe is the high Sabbath? <sighs> the day that you're not supposed to work. <sighs> oh, you the first day of uh, unleavened, on, bread? unleavened bread. Yeah. Oh, the fifteenth. The fifteenth. So the night of the fifteenth. Beginning the night during the day. And is that when you're eating the lamb or? That's the all night. Different. The night is when they're eating the lamb and leaving. Okay, so then again, my question. So if I was, if I'm not mistaken, you believe the Messiah ate the Passover with his disciples? Yeah. So then, it was a it was a Shabbat on that day, because this is the that's what I thought as well. And the question that was asked to me was, so then, do you do you believe that Yahusha? And Yahuwah was. Your mic went out again. All right. The question that was asked to me, I don't know, but it, it drove like a spear in my heart when I was asked the question. I was convicted. But do you think it was it would be okay for the Messiah and the Father to to be okay with his disciples breaking the Shabbat, being that that was the night that they were they uh they went into a courtroom i mean they're carrying his body uh moving a tomb doing all types of stuff prepping things getting spices uh versus the the high shabbat coming later with the other yahudim with the other jews of that time that's why they wanted to get out of get the whole thing done with before the sun went down and to get the messiah into a tomb because the next day was the high sabbath what do you think about that? What What is your thoughts? <clears throat> Again, <clears throat> I have a different perspective. High sa- uh, the scripture, that's the only scripture that ever talks about a high Sabbath. Um, one thing. Um, Two, I have a different definition than what the Jewish dictionary says the high Sabbath is, where they say that it lands on the same day. Um, I think most people came up with the conclusion that it's a Sabbath that lands on the same day as a holy convocation. Uh, So the 15th is a holy convocation. So many people say that the Shabbat landed on the same day as the holy convocation. No, I think we're just, we're just, we're just, uh, in the sense of the high Sabbath being a day where you're not supposed to work. So it's treated like a seventh day Sabbath, but it's not on the seventh day. Okay. Well, right. Cause according to uh, Exodus 12 and Leviticus, when it comes to Passover and feast of 11 bread, the 15th is a day where you're not supposed to labor or do any work. And the last day you're not supposed to do any labor or work. Correct. Right. There, there is an, uh, and um, I would have to find it in the Torah. Uh, whether it be in Deuteronomy or that there is a verse that says that you shouldn't do no servile work except for that which you will eat. So it says that you will you can make your food, but you can't 
you don't do no servile work. So that's a little bit different from a Shabbat because a Shabbat, there's a day, a special day for preparing what you eat as well. And there's never a, a time where, you know, there's a preparation day before each holy convocation. So in my mind, I don't look at the 15th as a Shabbat. I don't see any evidence in scripture where it calls every holy day a Shabbat. Um, I see when it says your, his, your, his Shabbats and his new moons and things like that and his holy assemblies, solemn assemblies. I think that the solemn assemblies is referring to his holy days, not the word Shabbats. So I don't look at it like a Shabbat. I believe that the Shabbat was coming uh, according to what the scripture says, where it says that the Shabbat was, that they had to take his body down before the Shabbat. Okay, so let me ask you a few questions. I'm going to read Leviticus 23, mm-hmm. <laughs> 6 to 8. You already? <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a matter of if, if I had the, the verses, it would be easier than trying to answer a question. Mm-hmm. But go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so Leviticus 23, 6 to 8 says, On the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread to Yahuwah. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. And the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. But you shall offer an offering made by fire to you who has seven days. And the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no work. Okay. So now if they're eating the night, do you believe that going, uh, going under judgment, like going into the courtroom and things of that would be considered work? Uh, when he was brought into, yeah, that was illegal. That was unlawful. You wasn't even supposed to be in a private person's home, you know, at, you know, when you're being brought before the judgment seat, that was un, that was against the Torah. Okay. So because Messiah went into the judgment seat or into the courtroom, do you believe that Messiah was part of that work? Therefore sinning on this day that he's not supposed to do any work. You mean when they brought him in? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about, his disciples? How about his disciples? When his disciples was brought in? What do you mean? When they went, with, that was part they of your question. There. That they were there. Well, they were following, when they followed the crowd? Yeah, I would say they were there during the whole court. court uh, when uh, it says Peter was outside and John followed. Mm-hmm. I would, I'm not looking at that like uh, breaking the Shabbat. Mm-mm. Following, following the Messiah. Okay. Uh Buying spices, I guess we have to determine when the, they were buying spices. When when they bought the spices or prepared the spices. Yep. Um, because the thing is, if you believe that the lamb is slain on the 14th, mm-hmm. right? Wouldn't that, wouldn't there's another passage I think in Luke that says, uh, the Passover, which is also called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So sometimes they bunch the 14th all the way to the 21st as one whole one whole package deal the 14th isn't a it isn't a holy convocation it isn't a high sabbath mm-hmm. right you could no. do you could do you could do all types of work all throughout the day yeah but it's you're the, slaying the lamb the so, four, so, so here's the point wouldn't it make more sense this is what was brought to me and it, it made me it convicted me i don't know how you're gonna feel about it but wouldn't it make more sense that the Messiah is being slain at the same time that lambs are being slain in preparation for the first day of Feast of Unleavened Bread to now, fulfill prophecy? Now, I think that that's a nice perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be nice for him to die as a sin offering on the Day of Atonement also. I think it would be nice for him to die on the exact day of all the sacrifice that represented him. That, that makes sense. But one of the things is that the sacrifices that was commanded to be done wasn't only that pa- that sacrifice that night. There was also sacrifices on the fifteenth day during the day that the priests had to accomplish. Uh, that's in Numbers chapter. That's in the Torah in Numbers chapter twenty-eight. So on the fifteenth, in the Numbers chapter twenty-eight, there was a whole list of sacrifices that had to be performed from the morning to the evening, including the sin offering. But that's on the 15th. And, and the Jews, the Yahudim of that day, would have been obeying. It, uh, I don't hear what your, your, your voice went out. I, I'm sorry. And here I'm, I'm back. For goodness sake. <laughs> Dell 2006 can only go to 
Windows Vista and I got Windows 7. <laughs> Need to update my life. All right. What was I saying? Um, all right. So I lost my train of thought. I know, I, I know I'm talking about all right. He was talking about the, uh, the Jihudim keeping the, the correct Passover, you said? Yeah, because that was the whole point, right? Unless you're inserting the idea that they were keeping it on a wrong time. Are you inserting no, that? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not inserting that they're keeping it on a wrong time, no. Okay, so then how was the Messiah eating the Passover lamb if you believe that the Passover lamb was eaten right before the sun goes down to begin the 15th day? No, that's Rick. Rick believes that, that you eat it right before the sun goes down. No, no, no. You, you, we said it earlier. We asked you, me and my wife, that you believe the lamb is slaughtered on the 14th right. as the sun is going down. And you eat and it it's eaten on the, at, night. The, at night. Right. Right. So then the question is, why would, why would Yahusha, the Messiah, be eating the night before, which is the night of the 14th, rather than the night of the 15th? The night of the, if you look at what, what Millie's pointing to, that's the night of the 15th, according to my, per, my view. So he would be eating it the night of the 15th. This is the night of the 15th. Right. And you, and you said that this is a Sabbath. Like, well, no, no, you don't agree with that term. I said it's, it's a, a holy, holy convocation. Yeah, it's a holy don't convocation. Serve our work. Which they, they convocated that night. So you're saying that they, they broke that? No. They came together that I mean, night. Uh, that the, the, the Yahudim broke this. They weren't I'm, keeping this. You know what's funny? They I don't working. know, they I don't know what the Yahudim did because they didn't really come in the beginning of that night to get the Messiah. They came and got him later on that night when he was in Gethsemane. Um, so I don't know that time before and the beginning, and I don't, I don't know what they were doing. It doesn't say what they were doing. It just says that at night they plotted against him and came and got him. All right. And do, are, are you in agreement or not in agreement that the Yahudim were slaughtering lamb as the Messiah was being crucified? Yeah, I believe, well, I believe so because the priests had this, that day they have, there's a command in Numbers chapter 28 to slaughter multiple different sacrifices. Yeah. Do you believe they were doing that? During the day of the 15th? Absolutely. That was when I believe that they were doing it from the time the Messiah was on, when he was on the tree, all the way to the time where he died on the tree. So, so then they were, they were on the right calendar, correct? Yeah, I have, I have nothing to nothing biblically to show me that they were on the wrong calendar right i believe they were on the right one so then they are eating the lamb at the right time they're eating the lamb after the messiah got put in the grave no no i i said i i don't believe that there was two different passovers i i agree i think there's only one but you you agreed that there's only one time the lamb is eaten and that's on the first right. day which is on the 15th night that's what that's what it says in exodus 12 okay so again the Messiah had the Last Supper meal with his disciples before right. the, the 15th night. Wouldn't you agree? No. I believe that he had it that night. So then that would mean that the Yahudim were slaying lambs um, as, as they were slaying lambs before the Last Supper. Is there a verse that says that? I don't know. No, I'm asking you because... <laughs> I I, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, again, the lamb is slain on the 14th evening before the 15th night, yes? The lamb, yes. Okay. This is hard, man, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to extract this out of you to see the consistency in your stance. Okay. Right. All right. 14th evening, as the sun is going down, the lamb is slain. The, the Yahudim would be also slaughtering and killing lamb and doing all types of sacrifices. Yes, we agree, right? 14th evening, slaughterings, offerings, priests are doing their thing. Families are slaughtering lambs. Everybody in Israel is slaughtering, you know, killing the lamb that they had since the 10th day, right? On the 14th that evening, they're, they're killing it. Uh, no, I don't. I believe that the, 
I believe that everybody, as far as the congregation of Israel, was celebrating it that night. Yes, as as far as far as families and groups, according to Exodus, they were keeping it that way. But during the day on the fifteenth, that's when they had to make those slaughterings. Because the fifteenth, in if you look at Numbers twenty-eight, those Passover slaughterings did not occur until the morning sacrifice. So from the morning sacrifice all the way to the evening sacrifice, they had bullocks, lambs, and all these slaughterings occurring, though from the third hour to the ninth hour. Okay, so not at night. So, at night, everybody had the congregation had to slaughter their own personal family uh, Passover, and they had to partake in it in their own personal family one. The collective group where the Yahudim was sacrificing that was during the morning. That was between the morning and the evening sacrifice, from the third hour to the ninth hour. Got you. So you would say that the slaughtering is happening 15th daytime and then the 16th night is for the Jews. The 16th night is the day that is is a holy convocation for them that they can't work. It was a Shabbat. The 16th is a sh- the 16th is a Shabbat, which is all made up. The sixteenth. I'm not I'm the sixteenth. This is. Uh, let me. Oh, how about let me. Run with me here. I know you don't like I'm the trying. Shabbat word. I'm trying. I, I, know, I know you don't like the Sabbath word, but holy convocation, a day where you're not supposed. Oh, okay, to work, okay, which okay, is, okay. Which is the fifteenth? Let's just keep it clear. Right. 15th, the fifteenth. The fifteenth is when you're not supposed to work. Fifteenth, you're not supposed to work, and the twenty-first, you're not supposed to work. So my question right. is, you just said that the they're doing slaughterings and offerings on the fifteenth during the daytime. Right during the daytime. Right. Which is on a Day Holy convocation. Do any servile work? Well, no. They were told to do that in Numbers chapter twenty-eight on the fifteenth. Well, in regards to everything else, right? Let's say you have the exception to that, but every you're not supposed to work your job. You're not supposed to do anything. You're talking about the court case and all of that other stuff that these clowns don't follow. No, 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 yeah. no. Stick with me. Stick with me. Don't don't I'm, go to where you think. All right, I'm all right. I'm trying to let me follow. <laughs> the you believe on the fifteenth during the daytime, the 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 priests are doing all these slaughterings and offerings. Yes. Okay. Why would the Yahudim rush to get the Messiah into the tomb on the 15th during the day if the 16th is not a holy convocation? Because the 16th was a Shabbat. Wow. Seventh, seventh day Shabbat. So you, you believe the Messiah was buried on... on um, Saturday night, uh, right before Saturday night? Yes. Oh, wow. I'm one of those guys. See? I knew there was something. I'm trying to, I'm trying to dig something out of you. Right, it's not right. making sense to me. I just didn't know what you wanted. <laughs> you really don't like that high Sabbath word. I don't, it's the seventh day Sabbath. I, I think it's this. I think the high, high, the high Shabbat is when, when a Shabbat lands during a time period of the Holy Assembly. You're not it's a literal like, three, three days and three nights guy, I suppose. Who a literal three days and yeah, I have a, I have a bunch of questions on that. I don't know if you want to hit them. Ah, uh, no, I bet you do. I've I've heard. I think I've heard all of them, but we can have that discussion. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. That that's the question I have that answers that question. Okay, all okay. Right. Can you um, redefine what you said as the high, quote unquote, high Sabbath again? Oh, okay. So when I look at a solemn assemblies, I look at the, um, when Yah talks about 11, 11 bread, he's talking about seven days. There's never a time where he pulls out two unless it's to explain to you what should be occurring during those days. But when he talks about the Feast of 11 bread, he's talking about all seven days. So I don't, I think that a high Shabbat is when a Shabbat lands during that time period. It could land on the first day. It could land on the second, third day, fourth day. I believe that a high Shabbat is a Shabbat that occurs when a feast is occurring. Okay, so it's a regular, I'm just going to say Saturday. It's a regular Saturday that happens to fall within a feast day. Not yes. In reverse, where it's like a Monday, that is a day not to work, that that becomes a high Shabbat. Right, right, right. Okay. One, because that's the only time it's mentioned in Scripture, and the only time... I've I've seen some horrible Jewish encyclopedias that try to explain the high Shabbat, and then they also would say other stuff that is not biblical. So I don't really trust uh, a lot of uh, 
Jewish encyclopedias to give me a biblical perspective, okay. you know. Okay. Now that makes sense. All right. Well, I totally disagree with the Friday night death. We could talk well, about that. Maybe you really time. don't because we, I didn't present anything for you to disagree with. I have a question for you. <laughs> Uh, you say that it was the Shabbat, a, a regular seventh-day Sabbath. How do you explain that on the third day and thir after, the, after that, he rose in, on the seventh day, or as some say, the first? How, where in that equation do you get the three? Well, you said you don't agree with the three, three day, three night thing. So I guess that would be my question, is if you say that that's a Sabbath, it can't be... Um, the same Sabbath that he that they came at the the two Marys came after, uh, he had risen. I'm gonna assume he's gonna say Friday is day one, Saturday's day two, and Sunday would be the third day. So he rose on the third day. I would I would say I can't. I, this is one thing I'm not gonna just blurt out. This this it wouldn't do it justice, especially since since I've studied it in a specific way. Um, one, I don't, I don't agree in the three day, three night must be a complete three day, three nights uh, in the grave because you would have to kill that that type of um, sequence because if it says three days and three nights, he can't really raise on the third day. If you have to have a complete three days and three nights, he would raise on the fourth day, and there's no explanation with him saying fourth day. I don't think I don't agree with that. So if you say three days, three nights, but then he had to somehow raise during the last part of the third day, that's still a, you still have to maneuver from a, def, a definitive statement, or is it not a definitive statement? I think it's a definitive. He said that would be a sign. No, I understand that, but think about it, Rick. He was in the grave for a full entire three days and an entire three nights, right? Mm -hmm. Did he raise on the third day? That, yeah, I believe so. That's Sabbath. How did he raise on the third day if he had to be inside for a complete three days and three nights? Because he got three full days. That means uh, that means he had a that means that there's a, a a portion of of time before that three days and three nights was over that he had to raise, right? Well, I guess from if you look at the stance that you're having, I could see you'd have a problem with that. But was the day starting in the in the morning? No, me, that's not my stance. Sure because the scripture says that he was had to put it be put in the grave before that night. Right, so but in there that night. Right. And there, if it was Wednesday, it would have been Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. I understand, I understand that whole argument. I know. I know the reasons. I know the argument. I'm asking you the questions because you're the one that has to have a full three days and three nights, not me. Well, that's what the Messiah said was his sign. Right. No, he said he's going to raise on the third day. He didn't say he has to raise after three full days and three full nights. Didn't he say as Jonah? As Jonah was in the belly of the whale? I, I would look. It doesn't say. It says as Jonah was in the belly of the whale, but when I went back and studied Jonah, it's kind of like he was pointing something specific. Well, I'd like, to know. like I said, I would have to. We would have to have this the whole conversation. Hey, Rick, Rick, we're talking about night and day right now. <laughs> this is about you. This is about day and night, night and day. I don't know which one. <laughs> well, I thought there was maybe some specific that you can point out. That's your point. No, there's, a, there's. I'm, I'm when it, I'm just like with you guys. I'm very. It has to be if it's specific, then it has to be very specific. If it's very detailed and definitive. Then it has to be very detailed. But every argument I hear is three whole days, three whole nights. But then there's this little portion of the of the okay. night that he can't. Or this little portion. Say of that the it day. wasn't three full days and nights then. But you would agree that he was put in before the high, the, what we call a high Sabbath, which would be the first uh, first day of Feast of Unleavened Bread, correct? Say that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. it said that the, the two Marys came after the Sabbath. That early, that first, uh, the, the morning of the first day. First day of the week. First day of the week, and he was already risen. So he was already gone somewhere in between there. So it's it couldn't the, have it's been the, the third same day. Sabbath. It couldn't have been the same Sabbath, is my point, though. Right, but um, all I'm saying is he rose on the third day. He didn't ra raise after three days and three nights. He rose on the third day. Okay, I, I so you, we would have to. Then we would have to go back. 
We have my one verse about the three days. My point was about you said that it was a, the Sabbath. He was he died on the Sabbath, or the, he, he died on the first day of unleavened bread. The Shabbat came after. And how long after did the Shabbat come? The next day. All right. He he believes. Pri- hey, Rick, 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 Rick. I understand Rick, Rick. you're trying to destroy a Real point. Quick. I'm not trying to make. I can make it with scripture. Real quick. Friday, Friday, Friday before the sun. Okay, so he didn't. Hold even- on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If it was Hold a man, right? I just had some just questions. A, Rick, just to, I can Brother answer D. it for him. I can answer because I, I like to answer questions real fast. I don't take long. Look, Rick, uh, Jadiel believes Friday before the sun went down, right before the sun went down, the Messiah died. So he died on a Friday. He said the next day, though. No, no, no. He, he believes he died on a Friday, and they put him in the tomb before the sun went down because the next day was the Shabbat. Okay, so then Friday is day one. <laughs> Saturday is day two. Sunday, he rose on Sunday. He believes he rose on Sunday, and Sunday would be the third day. That's what J- Jadiel believes. Okay, I missed Right, Jadiel? Yeah. Did I get it right? I mean, I, that was like... You, you know what? There's a, there's, a, there's a few details that I need to add, but I will accept that. <laughs> I will accept that explanation for now because I know that I'm not going to show you the verses unless you guys want me to. No, nah, we can go back and not right. So it, I mean, if we're gonna, we can't go back and forth. You'll be on the hot seat next time. I I love the hot seat. My my behind is ready. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just want I just clear you just clarify because I thought you said he rose the next day. So to me, I no, thought- no 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 not the next day. But I believe. Uh, all right, here's one point in my mind. Right, we don't okay. make we don't make a doctrine from one verse. Right. There's only one three days and three nights. That's my doctrine. Boom. <laughs> I like it. There's only one verse that says that, and it doesn't say he's well, in the grave. That would be the other confirmation. So technically, well, it says Jonah, and but it doesn't say he's in the grave. What does it say? He was in the well. He's a, no, he's no, 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 no. What, what did Messiah? Messiah said, "I will be where in the grave, in the heart of the earth." Okay. Right. Now, first thing that pops in our mind, oh, grave, it's just a grave, it's a temple, it's a tomb. Abraham's bosom, Sheol. Right. Now, none of those words was used when he made that statement. I could understand if he said grave, Sheol, Abraham's bosom, tomb. I could understand that. But he uses a phrase, heart of the earth, and everybody jumps and says tomb or dead. I don't, I'm, I'm looking at it at a different perspective because that's the only verse mentioned and there's a figurative statement taken, basically interpreted into uh, the first thing that pops in your mind when you hear heart of the earth. So do you think when he went down and got the souls, when he was, uh, when he was, uh, when he died, he went down, got souls, came back and preached in all Jerusalem. You think that's like metaphor or some type of symbolic I, 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 uh, you that just mysterious bring, bring passage a lot that pops of up in, uh, here's the thing I believe uh, I believe Messiah was asleep it says he was dead for three days and I believe that death is an unconscious state of sleep I, I can't say that he was doing anything because uh, th- th- that, that's another one verse that jumps out and says that uh, well it was talking about Noah and then it talked about the prisoners and stuff like that so um, we would have to go back and look at context, and then I could tell you my perspective. But I believe death is sleep, and if Messiah said he was dead, I believe he was sleep. I don't. Believe I got a question. Was... Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to jump in like this. I just sorry. don't have any way to raise my hand. <laughs> sorry, I didn't even know it was you. Um, so, so, so if he, if a Messiah was sleep, but he was also taking on the punishment for our sin, which is death. How could he have taken our punishment if he was just asleep when our punishment is actually death? Well, well, that's a good question. Um, Galatians 3 says that he took the curse of the law, and it says curses every man who hangs on a tree. And the death that he got the keys over was the first death. The, the death that he took on the cross was the death that he had victory over. Um, I don't think that he died and then had to go through like a second type of death in order to take our death. The, according to scripture, the death that we deserve is the death according to the curse of the law. Right. Which is the first, the death that he died on the tree. According to Galatians 3. 
Okay, so in that in that context, it's not sleep. It is the first death, the physical death. The first death is the sleep. It, it, the physical right. death oh. it, it leads to, once that the breath is out of you, then you're inactive. I would say so. And then that's what he took, and then now he has the keys to death, and he can resurrect when he comes back from that death. All right. There's another death that the scripture talks about that nobody can really resurrect from or have power over. It's called the second death in Revelation. And when you die that death, that's it. Like there, you, there's no power to come back. There's no keys to that okay. death. There's no, nothing is coming back from there. So Messiah, if Messiah would have went there, he wouldn't have been coming back. He took off our curse, the curse that Adam put, the curse that all of us put when we broke the Torah. He took that penalty and that curse, and now we are freed from that, and we are also we don't have to fear that first death anymore. Right, but all of us, all of us got to die, but not all of us have to die the second death. So we are right. all we were all under that curse. So if we all have to die, but we don't, all don't have to die the second death, right. wouldn't we only be talking about the first death as right. being yes. the? Okay. Yes, okay. We would only be all talking right. about. That's why when he referred to Abraham, he said, "Is God the God of the dead?" of the living and they said of the living he says okay so why is he called the elohim of abraham isaac and Jacob? because he was talking to sadducees that didn't believe in the resurrection at all so what he was emphasizing was that even though they are asleep they are still alive in the messiah so even that first death even though we lose our breath and go to that first death if we receive the messiah that's not even really a death to us that's just a sleep yeah, I think that he paid the, the the penalty of the second death on the tree because that's the one that we are not going to see. Those that are not in the Mashiach are going to see that. I, I, yeah, I believe he saved us from that. Right. I believe he saved us from that. Um, yeah, but I think that his death on the tree was an emphasis on the curse of the law. According to Scripture, it says, curses every man who hangs on a tree, which is from the Torah. Which is internal, really. So you're talking about that second death there, because we're all going to, well, all of us in our life are going to die at some point, unless we get snatched up before we die. But yeah, death, death is not. See, the thing, there's a difference between dying in in the Messiah and dying outside the Messiah. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, dying connected to Yah and dying outside of Yah. It's there's a difference. The the, the curse of Torah. A lot of people, like Achan, a lot of people, they died separated from Yah. So that even though they died that first death, that wasn't that was a crazy death, especially in your mind, to know that you're separated from Yah. That's what Messiah took. When Messiah was on the tree, he felt like he was separated from Yah. Just like anyone who would die a cursed according to the Torah. Like you wouldn't if if you broke the Torah and then you had to die, you're not gonna still think that you're alive in Yah. There's a turmoil that you're going to have saying, I'm separated from Yah. Yeah. I want to transition. I'm going to stop the recording here for this session, and mm -hmm. then uh, I'm going to just stop it here for now.